the show where we talk about Dice Camera Action, which is an online game run by Chris Perkins every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on the D&D channel. Um, we watched episode 118, and uh, normally we do the show on Thursdays, but yesterday was Thanksgiving, so we're doing it on the day after Thanksgiving, which is actually Black Friday, which, uh, did either of you go, did you, either of you go out today? No. Oh, hell, hell no. <laughs> hell no, I don't go out that day. You, that day's a stay in. So you're waiting for Cyber Monday? Isn't no, I just, I just, I, <laughs> I, I put my head down and wait for the, all the shopping stuff to pass me by. <laughs> Oh, hi, uh, hi Ravina. Hi, look at Trupa. Uh, yeah, anybody in the chat, anything you type in is going to appear on the screen. So please feel free to make comments or questions. This show might not go an hour. We'll just, however long it goes is how long it goes. We'll just go through the episode. Um, so, Shauna, can you do a recap of what happened on this one? Um, so, yep. So uh, we begin um, this tale of two shifts passing in a night with uh, Evelyn meeting up with. Uh, Talisman and Daragon, the uh, dr the drow, new head of the um, Church of Lathander at the uh, waffle, at the Waffle House. They talk. It's fairly fairly cordial, and Talisman thinks that the plot was meant to frame her, possibly, and she, she successfully finds a way into Evelyn's heart by talking about horses. Um. So after that, um, Evelyn and Paulton decide to go race, try and raise some money by basically busking out in the streets of uh, Waterdeep. Well, at the same time, Strix pays a visit to uh, DF in the uh, Castle Waterdeep, uh, what was it, prison, prison cells. She leaves some pie and they kind of have a nice moment. But after Strix leaves, someone calling themselves Larry Silverhand offers to have Diath released for his for his for the Waffle Crew's basically defeat of Xanthar and the help that they that they've done for the city of Waterdeep. And um the so later on the Waffle House, which apparently still has everyone in there, plus plus Warrington Mutt has a gun now, so add that to like the things that could go wrong in the like city. A, it's like a rifle, right? Yep. So DF comes back, um, kind of goes upstairs, has a beautiful, like a nice little moment with Strix where he kind of uncharacteristically sh is shows or is a little more forward with his feelings towards Strix, which caused her to think that she is cursed. And so it ends up being talking to Evelyn, both of them talking to Evelyn about relationship stuff, where um, DF and Paulton have a little I'll have a little more argument over the fault of the uh, him going to jail over the wine. So eventually, with all this stuff happens that happens during Paulton's busking busking foray, they had a uh, invitation to the um, to see to one of the uh, the one of the, um, the nobles noble houses, the yeah, Huns. The Grell Huns, which mm. they decide to go visit, yeah. like help Paulton with their um, the performance, while Diath is staying in the Waffle House. So they get there and are basically almost immediately ambushed by um, individual black leather, which are which are probably members of Tarim. That just and then a woman says, "Kill them all," and that's where we end that little cliffhanger to next week. Sim Simo Weissen, uh, the yeah, they had a hard time remembering the name of Talas and Daragon. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometimes these the Forgotten Realm names are hard to remember. Uh, I, I, I think I remember it because um, when I was writing the wiki, like, I don't know, I had to make a page for her, and I was trying mm. to figure out how to spell Daragon. Mm -hmm. So uh, it never, it always, that one stuck with me, but I can see why that was hard. Yeah. That's always like the rapid fire parts of like doing the show after. It's like, okay, that name. Okay. Yeah. I think. Okay. Dylan Perkins comes up with some crazy names. Yeah. Dylan, Dylan what'd you think of this episode? I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. um, I did notice one thing that Chris, like after some of the events, he said like day one, day two, mm -hmm. and we only got to like day three. 
And the episode was titled 10 Days 10 Days, of our lives. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I found that interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I... But I think that title could also be a play on the old soap opera called Days, yeah. of, our lives. Days of Our Lives. But uh, you do get the sense that he had planned on running all 10 days in one session. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, do, I do wonder... I do wonder about that, you know? Just, like, what else he had planned, if anything. Saima, uh, there were guards mixed with the sense, right? Yes, that there were. me a lot. And uh, mm-hmm. Illustrosi says, I think the guards were the sense. Well, that's, this stuff, I, I'm mm-hmm. going to try not to spoil anything. It's from this Dragon stuff Heist. is from the Dragon Heist adventure. Grawl, yeah. The Grawl Huns are a big part of Chapter 3. So what Chris did was, he basically took that chapter and kind of set things a little back in time. Some stuff happens in Growlhund Villa in Dragon Heist, and he's kind of brought the group there before that stuff happens. So, um... Yeah, it's it's that. interesting how Chris has played it. Like, it it's, it's sort of like he's taken all the pieces from Dragon Heist mm-hmm. and has, like, mixed them around and is using them differently, and it's, mm-hmm. it's really interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah... It's yeah, it's kind of like what he's done for like the last couple official adventures, kind of like mix it up, but keep the flavor of it, keep some of the yeah. stuff that's kind of like similar, but not enough to like spoil people and what's happening in like Dragon Heist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So uh, I took a big pile of notes, and there's a really good theory on mm-hmm. the subreddit yeah. that we'll yes. get to it's soon, but uh, I guess we'll just start from the start. Um, so the things I noticed about Talastin. Mm. She's pro Lithander. You know how the mm-hmm. the church is like switching to a monitor, and um, but she's she's not into a monitor. It seems like, mm-hmm. and to the point she's saying nobody's even sure if a monitor is actually going to rise again, which I yeah. thought was interesting because the the church is completely preparing for that, and Talastin seems like she doesn't either doesn't believe it it's going to happen or she doesn't want it to happen. Yeah. And then, um, so Evelyn was talking to her, mm-hmm. and Evelyn asked her, were you behind the assassination? And she didn't say no. She kind of sidestepped the question. Well. And it was like, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, like, uh, hey, maybe we should back up for a second, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, because it was like, I think. I had thought, and I think you, 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 you two might have thought as well that this was probably Father Morn. Mm. And, yeah. Uh, but now, I mean, with that, it was like she didn't seem too bothered by the murder. I guess maybe there was the tension. I think between like the um, like the schism between like the the Lathander and the um, Amanator stuff is maybe like you know. This makes it easier for me, but I think, yeah, still that, like, it screams, like, let's paint the drow in a bad, in a, in a bad light. Because it's yeah. like, if you're a drow, using an obvious drow poison maybe isn't the thing to, like, kind of... And, and the more I think about it, the poison was called sun death. Mm-hmm. And Lathander is, you know, god of the sun, sort of, yeah. dawn. It's like, I didn't, you know, it's like that just, that just connected in my brain. Yeah. Mm. Because I heard him say it was a drow poison. Immediately, I'm like, oh, someone's framing to last in. You know, but mm, sun death, that's very clever. You know, that's. It is. That's like, dang, Chris Perkins. <laughs> you know? And it went unnoticed by me. You know? It's like, sun death. That's really good. <laughs> I, love, I love how entranced you are about this, Sean. It's amazing. It's good of all the poisons, you know. It is very, it is very clever. It's, it's, a, it's po- you know, if if it's not her, it's still Lathander. Lathander priest like dies from sun death. So mm. I think that kind of thing probably comes from, like Chris says, he thinks about the game all week. So yeah. he only runs this one game, and he's all week, and he's kind of thinking it, mulling it over. So I think that's it's like a it's a thing to emulate, I guess, uh, as a DM, you know. I'm running, like, four games a week, so it's hard for me to, <laughs> you know, I'm like, ooh, I should be doing fun, clever stuff like that, but I'm, there's so many, you know. <laughs> no, you know. <laughs> I wish. Good. Um, 
Illustrosi. I think Morn used the drow poison to frame to last, and that's what I was thinking as well. Mm -hmm. Um, question is, why was Jarlaxle at the church then? Because the dude that winked at Diath was almost 100% Jarlaxle. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if it was or not. We don't know who that wizard was. The wizard with the spiked hair, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. We don't know who that was. Like and The group hasn't asked around at all. That's true. And I don't think he, it's been brought up again. Like, I don't think they even brought it up at, like, the courthouse mm -mm. or anything. Like, that they saw this weird dude. No, they didn't. They didn't. They just kind of let that Gosh. go. Let that go. It just, the spiked hair was like, hmm. it's like, oh, that's probably a Jarlaxle disguise. You know, just because, you know, in the book, in the book they, they give you some Jarlaxle people Jarlaxle pretends to be. And they're all kind of eccentric and weird like that. Mm -hmm. So that would mm. kind of fit in a punk rocker elf wizard, you know, fits right in with the Sean Connery from Zardoz, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, so <laughs> then Chris, I kind of got excited as he mm. pointed out that Father Morn has described himself as a descendant of someone named Randall Morn. Yeah. Way back, long ago. I ran, there's a series of adventures in second edition. It's a trilogy of adventures. They're low level. And it's called the Randall Morn Trilogy. Mm. And I bought them because at the time when I was a kid, uh, there's this is really horrible hobby store that got like the worst products. And so, I mean, not that these adventures were horrible, but these were the best choice out of all of the horrible products that they had. It was like, you know, it was like Wankmar, all the Wank you know, Wankmar stuff ah. you could ever want. You know, like just stuff that nobody bought, like the Dragonlance other lands which wasn't even the other continent it was like islands and stuff so anyway randall morn those adventures are really good especially the middle one the secret of spider haunt and those adventures are about randall morn and his sword of the dales which i believe the group gets at the end of it if they survive the whole thing and uh ravenna says that uh, randall morn has been in a few forgotten realms novels mm. so it's like as soon as he said randall morn i'm like oh hey a little piece of uh Forgotten Realms lore that I actually know, you know? Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure we when we were first introduced to Father Morn, mm. we were told his other name. He wants yes. to be known as Father Morn, but he was Cormero. Cormero, Father Cormero. Yeah. So the dude's probably I, a liar. I actually looked it up. Um, Randall Morn's sister, her name is Silver Cormero, because she married into the Cormero noble family in Cormier. Oh. So. Mm. It's possible that Randall Morn is related to him, but is, like, from his sister's side of the family. Mm -hmm. Dang. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's go. it's interesting. Hmm. So then he might be. He might not be lying. And and, and so Talastin had asked Evelyn to go look into this. Hmm. And so now it's Evelyn's job to read up on Randall Morn mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. Sword of the Dales. Oh, it's very player. interesting thinking about where that might go. Like, I do wonder why Chris would connect someone to, like, that. And I, I do wonder if, like, a future adventure is going to have something to do with Randall Morn or the Dale Lands and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, It's just, it's weird to when you say that because there's so there's such a checklist of things that mm -hmm. you deal with. Yeah. And it's weird to say that on on session 118 that mm -hmm. there's so much for the group to get to. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It's such a long campaign, but they still have a million things to handle, which is a weird thing. You would think I would think by now like as a DM, okay, we did 118 sessions, you know, what's mm -hmm. there left to do? But mm -hmm. on this show it doesn't feel like that at all. Does well, I think I think Chris's whole thing with DMing, uh it's kind of like that organic growth of the world as the party does stuff you know like things are going on that they're not involved in mm -hmm. and they might get ganked into those or they might not deal with them mm -hmm. at all you know yeah and like it, it'll still be on the the checklist but they just might never check it off yeah i'm starting to feel like that the mm -hmm. show is gonna go for <laughs> 250 to 300 episodes that's... Because they're eleventh level, and I mean, how many in the la this season started on episode ninety one? 
Yeah. Yeah. Did they gain what one level? I think so. I think yeah. They've only gained one level. It's almost yeah, it seems episodes. like yeah, like story progress because yeah, it's like if you want it to last that long, I think that's not a- kind of like gone less next P and more like how does is this a good time for them to level or did they have they gone through like um like some sort of like story thing? Yeah. Um, Simon says that uh, Randall Moore is going to come in as another crush on Evelyn, calling it right now. Oh my god, <laughs> that'd be funny. <laughs> And look at Troopa, I really hope they're doing Dungeon Plus instead of Dragon Plus or something, if they're planning to put out even more Forgotten Realms adventures. I, I should look on the DMs Guild, see if those Randall Morn adventures are there. Those are those were really good adventures. What I liked about them was they were real short, and mm-hmm. they were real easy to prepare. And mm-hmm. they were fun, and they were low level, and it worked out perfectly for the people I was running for. It was just like, it was a real lifesaver, those adventures for me, because it was so easy, they were so easy to run, and they were really good. And, you know, back in 2nd edition was the, the time of the wall of text, you yes. know, where it was just pages and pages of backstory and explanations for why this empty room is here. And, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Mm. Which they've pretty much done away with now. They still do do it a little bit, but not, not like they used to. Um, yeah, so let's see. Uh, oh, Talastin's origin. I'm not sure if I got this right. Talastin is blind. Mm-hmm. Is yes. that right? Yeah. So it sounds like when she first came out of the Underdark, she looked up at the sun. And I mean, like Donald Trump did during an eclipse, if you remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah one of his staffers she's... screamed out, "No, don't!" <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's also a drow, so that's doubly bad. Oh God! Already, yeah. Like sun sense him and just like. Yeah, regular person looks in there. I can't imagine. That's like, true. The, the sun. first time, you know what? The first time you come out of the underdark and you look at the sun, you probably would go blind, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think there's something about that in the Driz books when he first comes out. But like he comes out at like twilight or something, so it's not like direct sunlight directly yeah. to your eyes. I didn't even think of that, but that's crazy. That yeah, yeah. But she, but she uh she decided to become a priestess of Lathander. That's a really cool character. I like that. It is, yeah. yeah. It, I love it, the concept. It's like, that's the kind of thing where it's, it's a it's a dark elf who worships a sun god, and like, I can hear people coming up with it, mm-hmm. but not running it the way that this character is being run. I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. very logical, and I don't know, just each NPC in Waterdeep is, is unique, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Really, like, it's not Everybody's got some kind of gimmick, and I like it. And it doesn't feel ridiculous. It just feels like this city has characters that are like one step further than normal, you know, because it's an, a city where they're used to adventuring, and all these adventuring types are all mm-hmm. smushed together. And so you get all these interesting little twists and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Where like everybody, everybody in the street has some weird story and they'd probably mm-hmm. be the most unique and complex character in a small town in a regular campaign but in yeah. this one everybody is like that i think yeah, everyone kind of has that pc possible pc flavor to them yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 they all have a really cool yeah they have a cool thing um illustrosi lathander said he would redeem her the price being her sight that's cool uh ravenna lyriel almost blinded herself too lyriel I don't know who that is. Hmm. Oh, that's uh, Lyriel Bainray. She's one of Joe Axel's relatives. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Luca Trupa, imagine coming out of the Underdark for the first time during an eclipse. That would be awesome. Oh, also, don't look at the sun. <laughs> Saima, what's the big deal, guys? This doesn't seem to be too bad. At all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then we got into a thing where hmm. Paulton. Uh, decides, you know, because it's kind of they got they ended up getting into a fight, but I mean, like Paulton felt guilty because Diath was in prison. Yeah, pr- in prison because Diath had stolen wine from the crime scene, right? Yeah, and um, so Paulton's thinking, all right, well, it's a five hundred gold fine, so he's gonna go out and make five hundred gold. First of all, it's crazy that an eleventh level character doesn't have five hundred gold. <laughs> I mean, they have stuff; they just kind of like aren't good at keeping track of it. Because okay. they still have money, it's just like DF hit it, mm-hmm. and, and I think Paulton had a lot of gold, but they probably spent it by now. 
Yeah, they're I, very. I, I wonder how their loans going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the on the manor. Yeah. Yeah. So That's a good he decides to go perform. He rolls a really good performance check. Mm. And he makes 21 gold. And while that's going on, all the fans kind of crowd out Evelyn. Yeah. And then here comes Todd. Yeah. Hello, Todd. Todd. Todd good. Uh, and it's so fun because it's like I was hoping that this would happen. Is that I – because I always felt like Paulton didn't really – it was like why does Evelyn even like this guy, you know? Mm-hmm. And now – but now as soon as somebody else, you know, approaches mm-hmm. Evelyn, Paulton gets real weird – Right. Yeah, like act like <laughs> antag like this time especially like an- like very well. It's been every time, but like mostly like in front of Evelyn being antagonistic toward whatever possible like mm. person that seems interested in her this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so he's he actually dropped a vicious mockery on Todd. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, uh, and, Oof. You know, that's it. A... Told him he'd been friend zoned. <laughs> something else then inserted himself into their little get together yeah kind oh of, Paul kind of... being like and just at like a weird yeah like it's just for but... Todd I kind of feel I feel bad for Todd Todd's trying and like this, yeah. like, this weird person he, like he's not quite sure is like is this her friend it's like <laughs> you know that like Hitler did nothing wrong meme you know uh-huh. Todd did nothing wrong right Todd just yeah. like, he, Todd hasn't done anything he... wrong he may He's be just a picked, nice guy. He, he may be picked an inopportune moment to ask Diaz what her favorite, what Evelyn likes, but that's so I mean that's the worst that he's done. He's just very like and that, Paulton needs to make his intentions known if he wants if he really wants to like because this is this seems to be stressing him out a, like a lot. <laughs> like everybody is a suitor in Wardy for Evelyn at this it seems like and okay. this was somebody was talking about this. I, I went through the dice camera action yes. subreddit. Yeah, one of the things people mentioned was. They said, I love Jealous Paulton, but at some point, he's going to have to do something about it. Mm-hmm. You agree? Mm-hmm. Yes, it's... I mean, she has people that are actively interested in her, so... <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's been Jealous Paulton pretty much since the start of the season. And I think yeah. Evelyn's starting to catch on to that he's being shitty in front of her. Like, she's True. been calling him out, like, about that recently. <laughs> Especially, like, I mean, like, Todd... Todd, bringing up the flower thing, Todd brought flowers, mm-hmm. morning glories to the house, and then Paulton like stepped on them, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he stepped on them like these might be poisoned, and she was, yeah, not happy about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was it this episode where she she impl- you know like she's like you're a jerk, but I like you that sort of thing. Yes, it seemed like yeah, yeah, you maybe want to watch yourself, Paulton, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ravenna says that the bank, the bank probably lost the money. Possibly, that would be good. God, Saima, no. to be Thanks, fair, man. the one time before this, Paulton played in Port Nine Zaru. He made 150 gold in one day. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, to be fair, from like busking in the street, 22 gold is a lot. Yeah, yeah, right. The average yeah. person makes two gold a day in the DC yeah. world, so twenty one. Couple like thousand insane. dollars, it seems like for that yeah, thing. That's a lot of. That's, yeah. That's good. Uh, Ravenna Todd says, "Hi, want to buy a copy of Skyrim?" <laughs> 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 Illustrosi, uh, you know this is interesting. Illustrosi, okay, he said something. Somebody in the subreddit said too. Chris is trying mm-hmm. to push ahead this Evilton development with Todd Merloon and others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you think so? I th- yeah, it's it's definitely point of attention more than it is for doing that same thing with either Strix or or Diath. So this yeah, you're gonna do with either one of the pairs. It's gonna be Paulton and Evelyn, I think. I just I think it's a natural thing that would happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Evelyn has a yeah. really high charisma, right? She's, and she's also really nice. She's pretty. She's a noble too, so sure her standing is pretty high for possible suitors sure. as well. And she's in the city, right? Yeah, full people. She's home basically, right? And oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Paulton's. I'm Paul. The only time Paulton shows any interest mm. is when stuff like that happens. It's yeah, very... I'm surprised more people aren't going after. It's not the reverse at this point. We haven't gotten a little bit of that, too. That's a good point. 
What do you mean the reverse? Like people going after Paulton. Paulton, yeah. Like he that's has Paulton is he had like the fan like rock star, so it's like and stuff. Of course, you. That's you true. Yeah, he has a very high charisma too. Yeah, you're right. You're you're nice right. Dressing nice. You would think that there would be people. He's such a. You know what? He's he's just. He's such a hot mess. Like he's probably wasted and like what? barfing what? on himself. What? That's a. So that's think... a rock star though. <laughs> it's true. He's a rock it's true. <laughs> a long time ago, I worked in a grocery store, right? And there's this mm-hmm. guy there. His name was. I shouldn't say his name. <laughs> but he 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 like he partied every night. We worked overnight mm-hmm. stocking shelves, and one day he came in. He had vomited all over his shirt, and he just came into work like that. Not... And this old guy came over to me. He said, "You know what that is, Sean?" And I'm like, "What?" He's like, "That's a hard party and lifestyle." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, no, I'm sure, that's what that is." What <laughs> 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 sounds sounds like a lot of fun, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, he's okay. I uh, Simon says I have this feeling Nate is planning something for the fireside episode. He's really mm-hmm. upped Paulton's hostility. Mm-hmm. That is very possible. Um, because we only have one more episode before Pax Unplugged. Yeah. So. Well, one thing we didn't get to yet was the argument with between Paulton and Diaz. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh we'll boy, get to, yeah. We'll get to that oh. in a second. Um, I don't want to. All right, look at Troopa. I can't speak from a position of authority on account of not being caught up. Oh, you're not caught up. But it doesn't sound like Paulton and Evelyn are a good pair. Interesting. You know? Yeah. Maybe so. Just because yeah. you're player characters who have yeah. crushes on each other doesn't mean you're perfect for each other. It's true. Mm-hmm. Wow. I think I Paulton mean... would be crushed by that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> He's had a long time, though. Because Evelyn's really the one he gets along with best. Of the, she puts of the up with him. She puts up with him. Strix doesn't put up with him. And, like, there's sure. always this weird, like, passive aggressiveness with DF that always is there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, maybe Paul needs more. He's a Deadpool, right? Maybe he needs a Harley Quinn type of character. Hmm. Because... You know, it really got weird the last two episodes where he started bashing religion in her church, mm. which is her whole yeah. life. And since then, it's like things things turned slightly. And Paulton, I don't I don't know if he, Paul Paulton realizes it yet, but he's kind of he's on thin ice, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, gosh, that would be so weird if that happened. Oh, that would be. I've. I've never seen that really like in a game in a game before. It's just like hmm. just some just like the character just kind of like there is that 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 romantic like ship thing that happened, but then it just I've never seen it just like kind of like crumble hmm. and the person like still staying in there. Uh, Ramrod, uh, to, is, did Ramrod give us bits? That is yes. really nice. Thank you, Ramrod. Thank you very very much. Uh, Saima. <laughs> He has a 20 charisma. Yeah. God, I'm you know? yes. Yeah. He should probably have groupies. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's all we need. What would Paulton not... do? Mm-mm. What would Paulton... Mm. How would he react to groupies? Would I he avoid them or would he embrace them? I, I think he'd embrace them and he'd probably use them. Yeah. I think he's done for himself. I think he would do that, but I think emotionally, like, yeah, he would keep them... I think he'd probably keep them at a distance. Arm's length, yeah. Yeah. Sima says, Paulton's parents got murked by a priest of Lathander, so I can understand his mistrust of that church. True. Mm-hmm. That is uh, fair. Yeah. That's... R- r- but that is, that's, that's, that, that's a big problem, then, if for, for between Evelyn and Paulton. Mm-hmm. Especially because uh, Von Richter's not a bad guy. Uh, the group hates him. He's not a bad guy. True. Mm-hmm. He's a good guy. You know, very they, true. They treat him very poorly. He's a good guy, mm. in my opinion. Ravenna, I'm convinced <laughs> Paulton keeps stonewalling Evelyn because he wants Diaz and Evelyn. Oh, is a convenient beard. Oh, the... Okay. Just, All right. Does anybody else think that? I I think he likes you, but I think I those are I think those two would be even worse. I think to 
Yeah. They yeah. Fight all the time. Yeah. They. Sure. they yeah. <laughs> they fight all the time. Like the. In this episode, the um, the money thing. Mm. I think the. I don't think Dieth wants to kill Simon anymore, but it wouldn't take much for Dieth to want he to kill Simon. He hates his son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, look, uh, this might be because I'm only around episode 80, but Miranda seems like Miranda seems like a better match for Evelyn. Dang. Keep watching, mm. Luca. <laughs> <laughs> you got to cut you off. I, I sort of envy you because you're you're rolling into a lot of really good episodes. The whole True. the whole run is really good, but uh, yeah, Evelyn and Miranda is the ship we need right now. Oh, we have, to, we have to figure out what state Miranda's in at this oh, point. You know, that is look, true. Look, I'll probably just watch the part where Miranda has that staff that makes flowers, right? Mm -hmm. That was a really good part. That was cool. You're right, sort of. Yeah, it just uh, look uh, if you so you've watched the. In the beginning of the series, people treated Evelyn poorly. And so now it's just nice to see the world kind of embrace Evelyn. And uh, I, I'm ne I'll never forget that there was that one episode where I think the group had just wrapped up everything in Barovia. Mm. And Evelyn wants to ride on a horse with somebody else. And every member of the party turned her down. I was just like, Aww. I was like, you, mother, you know. Was... But now, now it's different. Yeah. Now I think Paulton would uh, definitely get on that horse. But well, I think, yeah, all of them would. I think would. Yes. I think that the the, I think around that yeah the tenor of the relationship between all those people changed. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Now we're gonna get into the big theory. Yeah. Oh boy. So yes. Diath is in prison. First of all, he was visited by Strix, who used mm -hmm. her magic to get into his cell. Mm -hmm. And you know when that happened, I was thinking like, ooh, you know. There. Hmm. Hmm. What's gonna happen here? You know what I mean? <laughs> Nothing happened. No. Well, she, I... she left, and then uh, Laryl Silverhand showed up. Laryl Silverhand mm -hmm. is the ruler of Waterdeep. The or we, someone who we think is Laryl Silverhand. Laryl mm. is uh, from uh, all sorts of Forgotten Realms stuff. I know her best from the first fifth edition adventure, uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, and the, the sequel, Rise of Tiamat. Uh, she's mm. a big part of, of the ongoing story where she's dealing with this sort of congress of rulers and faction leaders. And my group interacted with her quite a bit, and it was very cool. Mm -hmm. And she's also in uh, Dragon Heist. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got to see Chris run her for a second. Um, so. Maybe. So DX in the cell, and mm -hmm. Laryl Silverhand visits him and says um, she's basically kind of intimated that she was going to get him out of there because he, he killed the Xanathar, right? Yeah. So, Dieth gets out. And now, I, I didn't notice anything watching this mm -hmm. episode. The subreddit yeah. started making them. So, the subreddit, you know, I watch the episode, whatever. I go on the subreddit, yeah. and they're like, I think Dieth's a doppelganger. And I, I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking feeling... about? That's I, crazy, I mean, right? But then I kept reading, Yeah. and it all made perfect sense. It's, yeah, I got... There's some strange stuff with DF, like after the the house, like when he came back to the house. Yeah. Like the thing that like really like he has me concerned is the fact he didn't care where that. Basically, they're impounding his items for a day. He's like, okay. Oof. Yeah. Because you know, like the importance he puts on the keys, and I doubt he'd be as as not stressed out about not having the keys on him. Now, here's the weird thing. You let him out of prison, but mm -hmm. his stuff stays there for 10 yeah. days? That doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah, it, I, it really doesn't. Why so do I read this him? doppelganger theory, and I'm like, what are mm -hmm. you talking about? And then I read that, and I'm like, you're right. And then yeah. he goes inside, and Paulson gets into an argument with him. And, yeah. and DF was being weird in that argument. Like, yeah. Cause it, it's, it really it's, was. It's really weird, because it's like, the everything that DF does are like things that DF would, I think, want to do but doesn't do. Mm. Because he at some point resents that Paulton kind of like puts him in that position. Like he, I think he would want to be thanked for that, but he would just every time that someone does that, he just is like, "No, I'll do it. I'll, you know, it's fine." And also with the Strix thing, he's 
never been that forward with Asterix ever. Like, mm-hmm. so people keep talking about it and how he's acting weird. And then he whispers mm-hmm. something to death. I'm gonna buy a thing. And then, and then there was a thing where Strix says, you know, you hid the money. I couldn't find it. And DF doesn't tell her where it is. Yeah. It's like, yeah. does DF yeah. know where it is? It, then. Yeah. So, all right. I'm, this is just straight spoilers for Dragon Heist. Spoiler mm. zone for the next right. I think I know what it is. 30 seconds. Yep. Yep. So stop watching for like a minute. <laughs> Turn off the yeah. volume if you don't want to be spoiled. On page 162. Secret simulacrum. If the you characters can't, make yeah. an enemy of Manchun, Manchun runs the Zentarim. He tries to capture one of them and replace that character with a magical duplicate created using the simulacrum spell. And the simulacrum has shown up on the show before. Mm-hmm. Hope yes. was a simulacrum in multiple point, times. This, this. And that's the spell where it makes a double of you, but then you melt into ice and snow, and you have half mm-hmm. your normal hit points. So in this, it says if one of the players is absent for a game session and circumstances allow it. Manchun targets that character for replacement while the rest of the party is distracted. So basically, this magical double is going to report to Manchun, the guy who runs the Zentrum. If you remember, the Zentrum yeah. were the people who got kind of were messing with Diath. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. But the other thing is, the Zentrum are enemies of the Xanathar. And so when Laryl oh. says, you know, you, you we want to help you because you, you took out the Xanathar, it's like, that could be the Zentrum telling him that. That could have mm-hmm. been Jarl. Well, that, that could have been Matt Shoon in disguise. Of course, any one of his underlings could have been any. I, I did consider it could be Jarl Axel because, spoilers again, in Dragon Heist, Jarl Axel does pretend to be Laryl for a little bit. So. Yeah. Yeah. Who, kn- who knows? Who <laughs> knows? A like, of, there's a lot of things going on. Because Diath was definitely acting odd. Yeah. Afterwards, especially like. And. I didn't think about this till later, but the fact that DF didn't go with them to the yes. Gal- villa, mm-hmm. if he is like a doppelganger he or a city locker room, yeah, he didn't go Zentrum. to Groundhog Villa where the Zentrum were waiting. Yeah. 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 Um, and the other thing is, DF has a magic dagger called Moon Splinter, which he can summon yep. to his hand. Mm-hmm. This DF made no mention of it or didn't summon it. Or anything like that. So if this yeah. DF can't summon Moon Splinter, Oof. then we know. Although it's weird, is a simulacrum attuned to your magic items? I don't know. It might be. I'm mm. not sure. But uh, his that's that was the thing. His stuff stayed in the jail, which makes me yeah. think the real DF is still just in the jail. Mm-hmm. And they didn't do the check. They didn't check him in any way. Like they know they talked about. It's true. They talked about like making sure it's DF, but they never really went through with it. Yeah. So, um, Ravenna, prison loving. That's what I thought we were going to see, but we didn't. Simon. It's the closest we'll get from them. I want someone to cast Dispel Magic on the new DF already. Mm. Seems like a good idea. Although it's kind of like, I don't, I, I, I hope, I, I'm sure they did, but I hope that the group doesn't read or hear about this theory. Mm. So we can see if, I don't think I would have, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe I would have, but. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't. I, I did, it didn't occur to me until I read that. Someone I would like to see that. I I kind of hope because I think Jared is really good at doing the role playing. And if that's true, yeah. like it's very slick the way that like. Yeah. So Chris probably emailed him in advance. And told oh, it, definitely. Yeah, because it would be like really good way to like take the um, checking for like. A doppelganger type thing off the table just again to like a really personal argument with some with one of the spellcasters uh-huh. and then like kind of throw the other one off their game did you ever see mm-hmm. um john carpenter's the thing either? yes yes you know the scene where they do the blood test mm-hmm. yeah yeah it'd be cool if they could do something like that to find out who's a doppelganger and who's not that'd be pretty cool um, <laughs> that'd be that would be pretty awesome i just watched that movie again the other day it's a good it's movie. A cool movie excellent um the monster's so freaky it's a real gross thing. <laughs> so gross. You know, and that's in this before CGI. That was like real yeah. practical I, I, effects. Like, like I think about that when I think of mimics, head. actually. When I think of mimics, and I think uh, like, oh, that's probably what they look like. Yeah. Some real gross flesh. Yeah. Flesh beast. Ugh. Um, 
Ravenna says they do have those Zent doppelgangers. Yes, there are in the book. There are oh, doppelgangers yeah. who work with the Zentarim also. Uh, no. Simon says also Dia staying behind was a little suspicious. Agreed. And this group has enough experience with simulacrums that they would suspect it. Hell, Holly even said she poked him to make sure he wasn't made of snow. Oh, I missed that. All right. Um, Look at Trupa. Reminds me of the Taz theory about the detective kid secretly being a dragon. Oh, I don't. That's the adventure. I story. have never I heard did. that in my life. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know what. But what about Angus would make him a dragon? <laughs> but all right. I don't know. So that's the big theory on the subreddit. That when I first read it, I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "Oh." And then, you know, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, in the book it says blah blah blah." And I went, "Oh, okay." Now I wonder if Chris finds out the people are talking about this and it's true, mm. if he's going to adjust it in some way. I don't know. He really can't, I guess. I I think Chris is one of those DMs where he wouldn't. Yeah. It can you know? go, yeah. Like, unless he thinks of some, yeah, something yeah, better. I don't even know how. Unless he thinks of something better, it's true. That's true, yeah. But I think I it's... Can even if someone postulates something on, like, the Reddit, like, yeah. you probably still go through with... I, I don't think that people figuring it out is a bad thing mm -mm. no no it's, I'm just, it's just because some are going to believe it and some aren't and then when the reveal comes and we find out you know it's just it's like a fun thing you know, yeah fan yeah. theories some come true you know and it's almost like it rewards you for paying attention you know mm -hmm. the simpsons you know so there's all these if you watch the simpsons and you pause it at the right moments you'll see jokes and stuff that are only there for yeah because all of this stuff, all the people stuff that people bring up about like the possible doppelgangers thing or the simulacrum thing is because DF he plays him very, very consistently. Yeah. And these are things, yeah. And anything that's that isn't consistent that isn't that it's not consistent, like it's it brings up like warning bells for some reason, even if it's for even if that is the other niche, just the prison stuff has kind of like put him off his game. It's it's still a little bit like concerning the argument between Paulton and Dieth was strange mm -hmm. because Paulton was much more aggressive or, I mean Dieth was more aggressive than yeah yeah it was the a fact weird, that the, the fact that Dieth said like you owe me yeah like made my eyebrows shoot up to the top of my head like as soon yeah. as he said that like really dude <laughs> I don't know about that because I think if it was yeah usually I would, if it was like the lines of like you know, apologize for stealing the thing, not like you owe me. It's like, I just yeah. wish you'd stop or, so, you know. It's, yeah. it's not like you owe me. That's a weird situation, right? So Paulton steals mm -hmm. wine worth 500 yeah. gold from uh, a crime scene. Yeah. So then Paulton takes the blame for it. and I mean, Dia takes the blame for it. Paulton yeah. Paulton tried to interject. Yeah. Uh, it's weird that people are mad at Dia about it, honestly. I, I, I get... I think DF the Dieth, way he not only did DF decided to just go ahead and take the blame, Paulton shouldn't have taken it. Period. Yeah, true. And and DF but... is a cool guy, and he's only wanted to help his friend out. If Paulton goes to prison, he might never get out. You know, and Paul, I was thinking Paulton would die of alcohol withdrawal. Oh. Ten days in prison. He's, oh no, he's a severe alcoholic. He's gonna die. Yeah, he's got so ship wine. DF was you know DF was doing him a favor. Although I guess Strix could have smuggled him in alcohol. Or yeah. Simon. Or Simon. Yeah. So you know what? If Paulton went to prison, Simon would try to get him out. Okay, oh, God. Yeah, yeah I don't think... Mm. Poison dart everybody. That would be crazy. Oh, yeah. boy. And the guards would probably destroy Simon. Wow. Yes, definitely destroy Simon. Simon's not... Good God. Wow. Wow. That'd be bad. <laughs> That'd be bad. Jeez, Oof. that would have been crazy if that happened. Holy. And the kids might have gone with Simon, too, because it'd be like oh, a little no. adventure. You know? Don't take the kids. They're like adventurers. <laughs> uh, all right. So that was the big thing. That was the big theory yeah. that kind of blew my mind. Um, so the, the group is then like, hey, why don't we try and get all that money in one shot? And Chris is like, and they're like, we need a venue. So Chris is kind of like, I think it looked like he was taken a little by surprise on that. So he flipped through the book, and real quick he grabbed Grahlhund Villa, which is in Chapter 3. 
Hmm. It's like, Whoa. and as soon as he said that, I'm like, whoa, 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 you know, because we're we're actually in that area right now in my Dragon Heist game. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Get... and it's it's a mm. whole thing. So uh, Chris grabbed that, and then it was sort of like I got the feeling towards the end, it, like okay, they're not going to need to do this charity thing because DF is out. But then the group decides to still do it. Do it. And yeah. I felt like Chris was kind of like, okay, they're not going to go there. That's that's probably okay. That's good. Like whatever it was he had planned, he was like, all right, we're kind of back on track here. But then they're like, no, we're going to do it anyway. Which is such a D and D, you know, you just as yeah. a DM, oh, you never yeah, know. <laughs> you never know. You know, you're the DM, and you're like, oh, okay, we're not going to have to digress into this weird thing that I wasn't ready for. And then they're like, we're going to do it anyway. And you're just like, I, all, right, all, right. all right, all right, here we go. <laughs> I think he may have haunted that row because he did hand out he did make a point of the um the invitation yeah yeah that's right i True. forgot they gave him a card so he was ready for that Whoops. maybe like i think even when he was like he was saying i think double check making sure things were right i think maybe that's what he was checking out mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't know that he at the beginning of the session i don't know that he had that planned but i think he did think it was might be a possibility mm -hmm. you know? and especially when palton started going around doing shows he was like okay Here's where to plant it. Yeah, and they started talking like they started like kind of psyching themselves up to do a show, like like yeah. getting you know getting strict, convincing Strix that whole segment is a decent amount of time to okay they're gonna go, yeah do it. Sima says a mystery is only good if it's hard to figure out, but not impossible. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, what DF did was basically jumping in front of a bullet for someone and then turning around and going, "Dude, why did you do that?" <laughs> uh it's it's one thing to like do something selfless or something but then like coming back and saying you owe me mm. is well a little oh yeah that is weird this, this, yeah it's a little, yeah, it's a little petty to do it's like something. that is weird uh ravenna maybe he should have let paul do it so he could detox yeah mm. maybe yeah. and simon or simon would destroy the guards oh simon's uh, I don't think simon's he... depending on how stealthy he'd be i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. I mean, and then you're gonna have all these dead guards with darts stuck in their necks. God, yeah, yeah that's a these, lot. They have these like Dude. mage guards that could probably track the darts oh, back God. to Simon. It's true. You know? And that might also unravel the whole "I kidnapped a little kid and stuck him in a box" story. You know, which mm. is still out there. And it's just, it's just bad news all the way around. You know? um, yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. <sighs> oh. Two good things. First, Warrington Munt bought yeah. a rifle. Yeah, Assault. it's a cannon. It's basically a cannon to the way it's just it's all, I, all, I, all I ask is like a couple minutes of Warrington Munt every episode. That's all. <laughs> I just I want him to hit something with that hit a bad guy with that cannon. Okay. Yeah, I, I do I do want to see him use that against somebody. I guess pre that. preferably something medium sized. Yeah. Mm. See what that does. And when the show's on, a lot of times I'm thinking. Where's Warrington? What does Warrington have to say? <laughs> so when he finally shows up, it's like, hey, you know, because it's so easy for an NPC to get lost in the background. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, if Chris has that, if his preparation includes a sheet of NPC names, then yeah. he's probably always got Warrington months right there. And he's ready to mm -hmm. I mean, he, uh, bust he the lives, guy out when he can. He lives in the house, so it's not, he just kind of like wanders in and out. Somebody in the subreddit said, where does he live in the house? What does he do all day? I, he works in that <laughs> gun, Question. I think. I don't know. He just has a room with barrels of smoke powder in it now. Waffles is upstairs. The kids are upstairs, right? I really yeah. Like, I really like it if they could do one Warrington Munt episode where the group... They, they, like, it involves a spell jammer. They, that would be so cool. They brought up a good point in this episode. Like, how much pie are... Like, are they all subsiding on, like, pies? <laughs> That's what they were talking about. Yeah. That's not great. Yeah. It's true. But then and Strix pointed out that the pies are a variety. There's vegetable pies and all that. <laughs> yeah. Still pies. And it's it's funny you should bring up uh like a Warrington Mont episode with a spell jammer, because there is spell jammer stuff in Undermountain. Mm -hmm. So I they're definitely gonna do the vampire stuff down there, but I do wonder what else Chris will pull out, you know? Yeah, because there has to be a reason he put Warrington in the show at all. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Maybe he's it, it seems like a seed. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they're going to... Uh... Yeah, because I did flip through Dungeon of the Mad Mage and there is 
Yeah. Some stuff down there. Yeah, what is Warrington gonna do now that his like initial quest of getting getting a gun is kind <laughs> of taken care complete. of? Yeah, yeah, like that was his most recent thing. It's like I need to have some fabricated. Well, he's a collector, so yeah. You know, I think he goes to gun shows and <laughs> just it's always buying guns and collecting them and stuff. Mm. Um Simon versus Todd. Oh, oh god, Todd's whoa. dead. Todd good is point. Dead. Right Todd. Good point. Ooh. Simon Todd is dead. Would, Simon would kill Todd. Ooh. This is, see, this is Simon. Keep Simon around, man. I'll tell you. Simon, can we get Warrington Munt on? <laughs> that would be so awesome. Warrington Munt on sniper support. That would that's be more, so that's, awesome. Yeah, that's 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 like, artillery. The, <laughs> the sniper, the way that uh, how big that gun is. Oh, is, it's true. <laughs> it's just like you want a block gun. If the group is in a fight. <laughs> things are going badly. Then all of a sudden, Warrington Munt lays down covering fire. You know, that would be oh, so boy. awesome. Do you know who Warrington Munt kind of reminds me of? Like, hmm. you know, in like Mary Poppins, there's those two guys upstairs <laughs> that like shoot the cannon. Ah. Uh, and I yeah. imagine that's what it's like in like <laughs> okay. in the house. It's just like randomly, just like there's just like explosions. Like, oh, the house. Look at Troop. But how'd they get waffles upstairs? They must have just squeezed. You know, they could have cast gaseous form. That's I was yeah. gonna say they might have just like levitated her through a window or something. Oh, Polymorphed her that. into a mouse and then or that. Yeah. Her yeah. Upstairs. There's a lot of possibilities. Strix Strix uh Strix has got all sorts of options. And mm -hmm. Paulton has Dimension Door. So yeah. that is true. Dimension door for a walk outside and then Um <laughs> and then flowers from Todd. And the note oh. in the flower says, Thank you for the smile. Oh, Todd. He's a great guy. Bless his heart. Mm -hmm. Too too nice to live. Todd. Is good. Todd's Shana. good. Todd's Dude, I know. Like it's like he's an NPC. Now. You aren't wrong. He's an NPC. <laughs> but Todd's a good guy. Too nice to live. It, that's definitely like a Chris making like a guard NPC that the party likes and is like friendly to the party, but also yeah, like making a character that's really likable so that he can might like, kill him later. Yeah. Todd, you know. Todd has taken on a life of his own. I mean, he, he was, really has. It was it was a random jabroni that just got yeah. plucked out of the ether. I think, I think Anna named him. Yeah. So, some of the I best mean, NPCs I found are made that way. Yeah. <laughs> just, just random people. He's just I mean, off to the races. Yeah. What what extra motivation if Todd is you know by a vampire? You know, just, just oh god, I'm Todd. Todd's Sorry, Todd. a good dude. You know. Paulton, yeah, should, uh, like Paulton needs to get his uh, priorities straight. Figure out what he's doing here. Really, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we've talked about how the group is kind of indecisive and without direction. Mm -hmm. Paulton is kind of the core of that. I mean, the others are slightly bothered by that idea when it's brought up, but he's just—he's lost. He's a lost character, you know. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. a reactor. You know, all he cares about is drinking. Yeah, that's it. Right. Does that and his weird like schemes, like his charity slash lawyer firm slash. But even that yeah. is a joke to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Everything's a joke. He's just, he's just, he's like, he's running on a real like. If you really look at Paulton, you know, mm -hmm. I, you ever see that Seinfeld where Kramer says to George Costanza, he's like, you know, you're really dark you know when i when i look at you you're barely there you know and he's like come on you're freaking me out but that's what paulton is like he's running on a real low level you know hmm. he's not he has no goals ambitions or aspirations that we know of he probably has them but he never says says them out loud and he never acts on them mm -hmm. right True. and it's like and i feel like lately things are kind of building to a point where it's like Paulton is going to have to make a choice here, you know, mm -hmm. to keep being this way or to, you know, just take a chance, mm. let go of some of the stuff that has happened and try to move past it or resolve it in some way. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. endle endlessly tortured. He's a tortured soul. He's just, it just, it never ends with him. I think that's definitely kind of like a thing this season. Because, like, we have we brought up Evelyn's brother and, like, her guilt about all that. Mm -hmm. There's DF's 
<laughs> mysterious whatever what with you know cages and like maybe a girlfriend who knows what uh, so yeah he's so like closed up all the time also did anybody else notice when Diath was in the yard of castle Waterdeep? Mm-hmm. did jared say something like it felt nostalgic yeah like he'd been there before yeah, or it, yeah, yeah. That, that, it wasn't that, like he said it was, wasn't good stuff, but like yeah it, it was familiar that that's is weird that, this is really weird to me yeah um, but yeah it, like it's a thing you know oh i just thought of some another item that yeah that didn't make the appearance like he there was no mention of the feather act like you would think that like once he got he would give that but there was not mention of that at all what, what do you mean the feather because strix gave kind of gave him the feather to keep him company and like that was something he gave the strix and you would think like once he came back he'd want to give that back right like right away you're right there's a bunch of good comments in here has everyone just forgotten that warrington munt is literally from space no. Oh yeah, not, no, I never not. forget. Never uh, forget that he's from space. Look at Trooper points out that we are all from space. That is also yeah. true. We are yeah. all made of space dust. Ravina waffles cast Unless stinking cloud thanks to the pie diet. Sima says, and then the flowers get stomped into the ground. Yeah. And Ravina says, Todd will only be killed if ES6 turns out worse than Fallout 76. Oh, that's a <laughs> Todd is immortal. He but like it won't happen. It could be it could be awful. He'll just continue on. Sima points out that the world is literally a game to Paulton. That's true. Yeah. He's oh, yeah. yeah. Fourth wall. He knows he's in a D and D game. So, mm-hmm. and look at Trooper says. So what you're saying is that Paulton's the type to put Joker quotes on his blog. Yes. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> it's very accurate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's kind of the choice he's going to have to make. I feel like is he going to be a Joker quotes blog mm-hmm. guy? Or is he going to... Um, they they what, desperately... What? Gosh, Paul, he's such a t- tough character. Like, yeah. yeah. What? You know, the thing about it is, if Paulton were to try to be uh, a good guy, or a... Uh, I'm not sure. Like, I think it would be a disaster. I, I don't think he has the instincts. You know, mm. his instincts tell him to steal a bottle of wine, and I feel like even if he tried to be like a a, a heroic adventurer type, that mm-hmm. it wouldn't take long for him to just slip up and because mm. he's so you know spastic and uh, and impulsive. He's very impulsive. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And uh, yeah, and like, then Simon says that's just the chaotic neutral mood. He's get cha- yeah, he's a great sure. chaotic yeah. neutral character. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a great like, example of a chaotic neutral character. I don't even think he has to be like a heroic mm-hmm. dude to have like character growth. You know, yeah. he... like it really is about him letting go of some of the awful things that have happened. Yeah, like, to him. just like less, uh, like self-destructive action i think would yeah yeah exactly i'm trying to think of i guess <clears throat> to take evil and seriously mm. and to show consideration mm-hmm. for yeah. her and the, the group i think that's the things that you want to see from him right and i think so yeah to, yeah to be part of the team to consistently yeah. contribute and he, he he does but to to be there for his allies he's so quick to leave and drink mm-hmm. there's been so many battles where he sits out while they do all the work and and not and i don't mean that and that's not in a in a jerky player way it's yeah. just it's what his character does you know yeah and it's it's not to the detriment of everyone it's just kind of like this this weird thing he really, he, no, he yeah. really is a great chaotic neutral character. Yeah, it's it's that. interesting with him and Diaz because they kind of have the same effect where they're kind of like they close himself off. Uh, yeah. But Diaz is self destructive, kind of facing and like, I mean not Diaz, but like Paulton is self destructive. You know, trying to be, you know, kind of he's he's trying to like he's trying to like um he acts more selfishly, and it gets that effect. But Diaz. 
tries to be more altruistic with it by like you know hiding stuff from them and it still gets the same effect whether he's they're both like very close and it's like it's a lot there's a lot of like strain i think from both of them yeah simon says um points out that the last few big battles paulton did most of the damage that's true and when they fought strad he was standing there right next to evelyn yeah he's just inconsistent and just uh, unreliable and and selfish the, the character not, not yeah yeah oh, yeah 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 you know? and so i think that's the thing that's kind of coming to a head with this character now with with todd swooping in and Maylun swooping in is that these are um more reliable upstanding people who have things to offer that paulton won't offer paulton won't open up at all right mm -hmm. he just won't do it like it was it's, it's, it's all a joke you know yeah it was rarely it caught, get serious you know it caught, 100 caught me off guard when he even said anything to evelyn about like anything in his past like mm -hmm. i keep thinking that we wouldn't he wouldn't say anything about that just mm -hmm. does it yeah. seems like uh paulton doesn't trust anybody yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i think at this point the rest of the group sh should have earned his trust but he won't he will not give it to them and they, he's, re I, he's ready to leave them like that he well he trusts them he mm. just doesn't trust them to be there because they i mean they they have a dangerous life and you know like they've i mean they've shown that they will die and you know you never know when you know that death is going to stay permanent there's no re there's no way you can resurrect them and i think it's just like they he's getting too close to them mm -hmm. and he's just ready like if you know like that like I think he's very yeah, much nice. one of those people who ha has the sense that, you know, it's my problem. I'm not going to put it on these other people. Not that I don't trust them, mm -hmm. but I don't want them to get hurt because of my problems, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Do you remember, Like, I'll deal with it. Do you remember when Evelyn first got into her construct body and how devastated she was? And he yeah. just kind of walked away. You remember that? Oof. I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. That was a low, that was a Paulton low point right there, and I think all of those things have added up now. And now, now it's getting to a point where it's like, this is it, you know. Mm. So it'll be very interesting to see. That would be so strange if uh, if there was no Evilton after 118 yeah, I, sessions of buildup. Because <laughs> yeah, I think maybe one of the things that kind of got Evilton through is like if they settled down he would act better maybe because like everything everything that they've had up until like marty they've been constantly like imperiled or had something like hanging over them and yeah now that they've had kind of like this this stint of that like, being like fairly domestic like that's that's something different that, mm. you know that this was such an awesome episode that there's still a ton of stuff left to talk about and like yeah, uh, this yeah. episode was like i really like this episode this is one of the rare ones where it was like i didn't want it to end you know usually i'm like after an hour or so you kind of get like all right i got my fill but this one was like just really good all the way mm -hmm. through and it was weird because i don't think there was like one dice roll you know through the whole thing yeah so those, are, those, are the, no. those are the sometimes those are the really good ones where you don't mm. pick just i mean that. just for performance but that was i think that yeah that was yeah like there was only at the very end, there was a hint of combat, but yeah, it was it was all good character stuff, everybody. Yeah. Um. All right, real quick. Um. The problem is, Paul and High Point are just after. Oh, that's true. When Evelyn dies, yeah, that's when <laughs> Paul kind of steps forward, mm -hmm. and she never gets to see those times. That's true. Yeah. Well, Ravenna, be interesting to see what might happen if Evelyn is just completely done and tells him off properly. Ooh. I think he would leave. I has she done that with anybody else in the no in the part i don't think so no that would be like that's the character that i would not want to see like truly mad more than it like because she like she's so you'd have to push her pretty yeah, far pretty hard yeah like it's <laughs> he's getting close yeah yeah I think so yeah i think uh, so look at trooper points out that this episode was just the camera and action no Ooh, dice nice. that's true all right there's a couple other things let's do them real quick Okay. Um, this is Diath touches Strix's face and mm -hmm. says, "I need you, right?" And Strix, yes, 
freaks out. Yeah. What is Strix's deal? Strix didn't have a right fairly like she didn't get the talk from anybody. Like <laughs> basically what happened is like she was an orphan, mm -hmm. had a brief time in a bakery, and then ran to a free wild and lived with Baba Yaga. That doesn't give you like she's Ugh. not equipped for like any like that sort of like feeling at this yeah. point the way that she's that she's had to live she's had it tough and like it's scary i think for her yeah and if other people who've grown up with baba yaga like igwilv or any indication it, that is not a recipe for a healthy love life <laughs> yeah because i mean it know. took like years for her to like be comfortable with diath like up yeah. to the point where the first episode happened like they had been, like, it took a while for her to, like, warm up to anybody. Um, okay, hold on. Ravina, um, I laughed hard when she was snarking at him in the previous episode. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Saima, the only people she's gotten truly mad at, Evelyn, are actual friends, so that would be terrible, <laughs> amazing. He deserves sure. it. He deserves it. If he doesn't snap out of it. Ravina, oh, ugh. Wasn't there also hints that Strix got used non-consensually in sigil i don't know i hope not. i don't know in you know like a sexual manner more so the way that people are sort of used you know like like the way shemeska shemeshka was gonna like buy her as a slave you know mm -hmm. oh right okay yeah because didn't she grow up in a bakery or something like that she well she was there for a little while but like yeah she mostly grew up like picking up bodies and for like yeah. a Okay. Yeah. So that was one thing. Uh, oh, Simon takes booze from a wrecked ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like that's been mentioned in previous episodes, but this was we actually played out that scene, and it's like, how did Simon know about that? It I was out know. on the mud flats where the test and the coven was at. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, I wonder if this is something that Chris and Nate have talked about before. Seems like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. it seems like it. Like seems it's like something a, like a normal thing for them to do. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting that that's another thing that in the Dragon Heist book there hmm. is a there is a wrecked ship, and there's but there's something linked to it. Yeah, that Chris has made no mention of. Hmm. So, I thought he might in this one, but yeah. I, I thought so too, but he didn't. So that's kind of interesting to see what happens with that. Yeah. But that's another thing that might pop up at some point. I, I, won't, I won't spoil that one, but if you look at the um, In the Dragon Heist book, they have the faction quests. If you look at those, yeah. there's one that deals with that ship. So it's, uh, it's a thing. And Chris has done some of the faction quests, just yeah. sort of not faction related mm -hmm. but he's done them like the mind flare and the intellect devourers and gnarl stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah. there you go i think we covered everything there a uh, lot of good stuff i thought it was a great episode mm -hmm. anything else you two want to oh well you know what we should talk about uh mm. pax unplugged is next yeah week. <gasps> oh, no. and they're gonna unleash some merchandise Yes. And all three oh. of us are actually going to be at PAX Unplugged. Yay. Yep. So, And we have never met in real life. <laughs> no. So that would nope. be weird. And uh, if any of you watching this are going to be there and you see one of us, well, if you see me, you can say hi. Yeah. I'm, yep. I'm like weird and shy. But, uh, same. Same. Okay. So <laughs> just, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> you know, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't get weirded out because I'm... Just a weird, shy dude. Oh, that, so. that, that dealer from is going to be a bad, bad time for me, man. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I've been holding off on dice, and they're going to have merch there. It's like, oh my, oh, my god. Well, yeah. I'm... So we'll probably buy some dice camera action merchandise. I, I have. I might get some. Yeah. Merch. I don't know. We'll see. Right. Well, I'm sure they'll have shirts. They said they'd have pins. Oh god. Yeah. I'd get a shirt. I'm a pin. No so bad. She's straight, uh, Holly's very crafty, so she's probably got all sorts of cool little things. I mean, she's oh, yeah, she making. She's been she making. She has her stuff. own, like, yeah. Um, she has um, Etsy stuff with um, all like shirts and stuff. Like, the yeah. client designed a bunch of it. A bunch of it's real, real, real good. Mm -hmm. Strix made like a Strix necklace that I got. Uh, 
Yeah. And it came, Pins. came with all this other swag, too. That was really yeah. cool. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to be at PAX Unplugged. So that Friday night is when that game is. That'll be episode 120. I'm actually going to be there. Yes, I, awesome. Unless something happens, I'm going to be there live watching it in the crowd. So uh, we will definitely have stuff. To, that'd be. I don't think we're going to be able to do this, but I, it would be cool if we could do a Waffle Talk where we're all in we're the all, same room. Oh, that would be, be cool. cool. This Wi-Fi cool. convention, no like hotel or Airbnb Wi-Fi is oh, so easy. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, I better check to see if this thing is sticky or not. All right, so uh, why don't we do some plugs? Uh, Sean, do you have any plugs? All right, um, usual thing. Um, Hell's Rebels on Sat on Saturdays at six thirty p.m. We are getting toward the end of the event of the first book adventure path. So see where that goes. And then speaking of packs, um, I am part of the um. Part on the panel for the um, historic and visual uh, trans transgender representation RPGs panel on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Bunch of cool people. Excited about that. Also very nervous. And that's pretty much it. Understandable. Dylan, do you have any plugs? I do. Uh, so Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time on this channel, Power Square RPG, we're going to be doing Waterdeep Dragon Heist. So if you want to see what could go wrong in dice camera action at the Growl and Villa, come see where we left off. We <laughs> it left was off. not good. Oh, no. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I got a whole bunch of games coming up tomorrow. Uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, uh, Dragon High, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, Hell's Rebels. And then I think at 9, 9 is it? Yeah, Rapid I'll Ethic. be playing Rapid yes. Ethic with yeah. uh, at, on it's the it's Ramrod channel. Yeah, and then Sunday I'm running Dungeon Academy at six thirty, and then I'm playing on the Greyhawk channel at eight thirty. Uh, return to Greyhawk shows having a special evil character thing. Ah, yes. And then Monday I'll be on Orchard at one p.m. It just keeps going from there. So, yeah, thank you, everybody in the chat, very, very much yes. for all your great comments. You really added a bajillion of good stuff to the show, mm -hmm. uh, and I really appreciate it. And uh, this will be on YouTube soon, and we will be back at our normal time, I believe, next Thursday. And mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe we'll do a special PAX episode. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, that's going to be like two episodes in a week. Yeah. 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 Oof. But we're not playing, like, any D&D &D next weekend. It's yeah. so weird. So... It'll be strange. It is weird. <laughs> oh, it'll be, it'll be, yeah. So uh, thanks, everybody. We'll see you again next time. All right. Bye. Night.